Well, hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Now today I'm doing something that I rarely ever do. And that is, I'm heading out to shoot to a location on a little bit of a whim. Now what I mean by that is, uh, there's tonight about a 30 minute window of opportunity to shoot the Milky Way. And that's because the uh, just after a full moon is rising tonight at about 7.30 p.m. Uh, currently it's about half past four in the afternoon so I'm heading out looking for a location to shoot I'm not going to have a whole lot of time to set up and do too much uh, and so this is a little bit unusual for me but I thought I'd, I'd give it a go and I wanted to bring you guys along just to uh, maybe for the entertainment value I don't know but I'm going to be running around a little bit like a headless chook I think uh, because I haven't got much time to get my location sorted set everything up, work out everything that I'm going to do, and then actually do the shoot before that moon comes up. But anyway, it's a gorgeous night, clear sky, looking fantastic so far. So let's go and see what we can find. finally arrived at a spot that I have shot at before. It's a lake and it's a part of the lake where uh, I've been a few times but this particular uh, occasion I think will be a bit different because the water level is a long way down from where the last time I was here and so there's a few dead trees out there in the water which I really like the look of and uh, there doesn't seem to be anybody around so it's fantastic. It's a beautiful spot. You can see the sunset there over there behind me. Uh, so I've got a little bit of time to kill before I get started. Uh, but in the meantime, I'll just have a bit of a look around before it gets completely dark and just work out my exact compositions. Well, I've had a really good look around here and I've come up with a great composition just down by the shoreline down there. And it's a spot that I haven't actually shot before. So uh, this is a little bit unusual for me. I'm getting the thermos out. I'm gonna have a cup of tea and something to eat. Normally I don't get that out until much later in the evening, but of course tonight there's not going to be much later in the evening because I've only got about that 30 minute window of opportunity to be shooting. As you can see, there's still a fair bit of glow over in the western sky, so I've got a bit of time. Um, and look, I think what I'm gonna do tonight is, is uh, take three different compositions if I can fit them all in. I found three different trees down there, which I really like. And the reason I haven't shot them before is because the lake is, is much lower than it has been the last few times that I've been to this particular location and it just enables that that option. Uh, a couple of the trees actually are a little bit higher up on the bank and I sort of stumbled across those by accident and you know that's one of the things that happens quite often when you go searching and hunting and that's the main reason that I had to make sure I got here before the sun actually set. So I just made it, uh, so I've, I'm puffing a little bit now because I've been sort of uh, running up and down this bank of the thing. I haven't had time to show you guys what I'm doing. Um, and because I've only got 30 minutes to shoot, I probably won't have time to go through anything on the spot, but I'll run you through exactly what I get up to afterwards. In the meantime, I'm gonna have my cuppa and I've got some beautiful biscuits here. So let's get into it.
And so down there, as predicted, there's our 93% moon rising up above the lake. But it doesn't matter, because I've got my shots. I spent my about, about 35 minutes down there shooting, and I, I was absolutely amazed and thrilled and delighted with the results that I've got on the back of the camera. You know, this is just an absolutely fantastic evening. It's cold, it's really cold. I've got my gloves, I've got two jackets on. Uh, it's freezing. But, you know, it's just a slight breeze, but not enough to make the, the lake really choppy or anything like that. It's really fantastic. And just the colour on the back of the screen and the, the uh, tree shapes and the reflections. I just absolutely love these shots. Wow, that looks absolutely fantastic. Just looking over the lake here with that moon coming up. But, you know, in the time that I was here, I basically shot from two different locations close together but at each of those locations i basically shot two different types of composition firstly i started with the tree in the water and i was able to thankfully separate that tree from the other trees that were around it and i love the way that the water shoreline just came around i guess you'd call it a leading line to bring the eye back to that tree now, the Milky Way core was rising up over there in the eastern sky behind me, and initially I started with my 20 millimeter focal length lens, and you know that that's probably my favorite focal length, but I did come here with the sole intention of actually using a 35 millimeter lens tonight. But anyway, I started with a 20 millimeter lens. So the first thing I did, I shot a, a single exposure just to get my bearings and I always do that I shoot a single exposure do just a rough light painting just to see if it looks good I shot that at f2.2 uh, 15 second shutter speed ISO 6400 and that was able to give me a, 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 a guide I suppose as to what I could do beyond that and of course then I was pretty by the way I was happy with that shot but then I decided well I'll, I'll, I'll go all the whole hog and I'll stack about 10 or 12 shots for noise reduction which I pretty much always do and I did that uh, and then did a few shots I didn't need many light painting of the foreground now on that particular composition I also did one long exposure one minute exposure at f2.8 um, at ISO 3200 I think it was and that's just the with the intention of being able to blend some of that that background that's not right back at, at the well obviously it's at infinity but it's not the stars it's the, it's the shoreline that I couldn't light up with my torch so we'll see how that one comes up I, I think it'll be okay then what I did I thought I, I just love this tree so much I got my 35 mil f 1.8 Nikon Z mount lens now this is um, a lens I've had for a little while but I've hardly used it for nightscapes just yet and I tell you what this is a very underrated lens I used to use the Sigma 35 millimeter f1.4 art series lens uh, for everything but i haven't used that since i've got this new z mount all of those nikon z mount lenses are absolutely fantastic and this one's no exception so i put that into portrait orientation because i needed to fit that tree in as much as i could so i flipped the camera around moved back a little bit and shot the same basic exposures f2.2 uh, iso 6400 10 second shutter speed um, and stack them for noise reduction once again just a little bit of light painting look hardly any two or three shots at max to light the tree and a bit of the foreground and I think those ones are absolutely awesome
I do want to emphasize that even though this lake is a location I've shot many times before, where I shot tonight, I've never shot before. And I came here, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, with um, the intention of, squ of squashing in a lot of action into a pretty short space of time, and I did that. So after I shot the trees in the water, which I've already showed you, uh, I, I just moved up the hill, just up above where those trees were, because I found another tree, just a gum tree. There's millions of gum trees in the Australian bush, but I was looking for just one gum tree and I found it overlooking the lake. Again, with the gorgeous perspective facing off down to the Milky Way core. So I left my 35 millimeter lens on the camera, Z6 35 F 1.8 Z mount, shot that tree uh, with my typical stacked for noise reduction technique, which I've showed you plenty of times before. Uh, again, I had the camera up into a portrait orientation just to fit the the tree and the sky in, because obviously with 35 millimeter, I'm, I'm starting to squash things down a little bit. Now, the reason I can use a 35 millimeter lens, by the way, uh, for those single um, compositions is because the Milky Way core at the moment, now it's, we're in June. So June, uh, you know, it, basically when the sun sets, the Milky Way core is already there. And if I wait too long, it's going to be too high to get the tree in the composition. So that's why at this time of year, you know, um, I'm able to do that with these longer focal length lenses. But anyway, that's what I did. And oh, that one looks great. But then I thought, well, I can probably fit more in just by doing um, a panorama. So I did a simple uh, four shots sideways, again, still in the portrait orientation, then tilt the camera up, four more on top of that. So eight shots all together in two rows two rows of four, same settings, f2.2, uh, 10 second shutter speed, ISO 6400. Now for each one of those panorama shots, I did a little tiny bit of light painting uh, because I want to try and make that as even as I possibly could. And that tree with both of those compositions, absolutely love it. have it once again our time here out under the Milky Way well it comes to a close and uh, you know it's been a sh well for you it hasn't been so short but for me it's been an exceptionally short space of time that I've actually been out here very unusual for me I usually spend many many more hours when I'm out so this was in some ways a little bit of a spur at the moment trip even a little bit of an experiment because I never do that I never just go off on a whim and hope that I will be able to find something. Now, of course, I, I did leave during the daylight. I, I would never leave at night time and come out here and hope to find a composition because that is just a disaster waiting to happen. But regardless of all of that, I'm wrapped with the images that I got on this evening and I hope you enjoyed them as well. And anyway, look, I'll look forward to seeing you. I've got an adventure up my sleeve, heading away for a, a week or so to shoot some fantastic locations and I'm going to bring you along with me so I'll look forward to seeing you then you have a fantastic week and I'll see you later